Hello everyone, today we're going to be reading Anne Fine's The Diary of a Killer Cat. Okay, okay, so hang me, I killed the bird. For pity's sake, I'm a cat. It's practically my job to go creeping around the garden after sweet little eeny weensy birdie pies that can hardly fly from one hedge to another. So what am I supposed to do when one of the poor feathery little flutterballs just about throws itself into my mouth? I mean, it practically landed on my paws. It could have hurt me. Okay, okay, so I biffed it. Is there any reason for Ellie to cry my fur so hard I almost drown and squeeze me so hard I almost choke? Oh, Tuffy, she says, all sniffles and red eyes and piles of wet tissues. Oh, Tuffy, how could you do that? How could I do that? I'm a cat. How did I know there was going to be such a great giant fuss with Ellie's mother rushing off to fetch sheets of old newspaper and Ellie's father filling a bucket with soapy water? Okay, okay, so maybe I shouldn't have dragged it in and left it on the carpet and maybe this step, um, maybe the stains won't come out ever. So hang me. Tuesday. I quite enjoyed the little funeral. I don't think they really wanted me to come, but after all, it's just as much my garden as theirs. In fact, I spend a whole lot more in it than they do. I'm the only one in the family who uses it properly. Not that they're grateful. You ought to hear them. That cat is ruining my flower beds. There are hardly any of the petunias left. I barely planted the lobelias before it is lying on top of them, squashing them flat. I do wish it wouldn't dig holes in the anemies. Moan, 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 moan. I don't know why they bother to keep a cat since all they ever seem to do is complain. All except Ellie. She was too busy being soppy about the bird. She put it in a box and packed it around with cotton wool and dug a little hole. And then we all stood around it while she said a few words, wishing the bird luck in heaven. Go away, Ellie's father hissed at me. I find that man quite rude. But I just flicked my tail at him, gave him the blink. Who does he think he is? If I want to watch a little birdie's funeral, I'll watch it. After all, I've known the bird longer than any of them have. I knew it when it was alive. <laughs> Wednesday. So spank me. I brought a dead mouse into their precious house. I didn't even kill it. When I came across it, it was already a goner. Nobody's safe around here. This avenue is ankle deep in rat poison. Fast cars drop out a charge up and down at all hours. And I'm not the only cat around here. I don't even know what happened to the thing. All I know is, is I found it. It was already dead. Fresh dead, but dead. And at the time, I thought it was a good idea to bring it home. Don't ask me why. I must have been crazy. How did I know that Ellie was going to grab me and give me one of her little talks? Oh, Tuffy, that's the second time this week. I can't bear it. I know you're a cat and it's natural and everything, but please, for my sake, stop. She gazed into my eyes. Will you stop, please? I gave her the blink. Well, I tried, but she wasn't having any. I mean it, Tuffy, she told me. I love you and I understand how you feel, but you've got to stop doing this, okay? She had me by the paws. What could I say? So I tried to look all sorry, and then she burst into tears all over again. And we had another funeral. This place is turning into a fun city. It really is. Thursday. Okay, okay, I'll try and explain about the rabbit. For starters, I don't think anyone's given me enough credit for getting it through the cat flat. That was not easy. I can tell you, it took about an hour to get that rabbit through that little hole. That rabbit was downright fat. It was more like a pig than a rabbit, if you want my opinion. Not that any of them cared what I thought. They were going mental. It's Thumper, cried Ellie. It's next door's Thumper. Oh, Lordy said Ellie's father. Now we're in trouble. What are we going to do? Ellie's mother stared at me. How could a cat do that? She asked. I mean, it's not like a tiny bird or a mouse or anything. That rabbit is the same size as Toffee. They both weigh a ton. 
nice <laughs> very nice this is my family i love you know well ellie's family but you take my point and ellie of course freaked out she went berserk it's horrible she cried horrible i can't horrible i can't believe that tuffy could have done that that best been next door for years and years and years sure my poor was a friend i knew him well she turned on me This is the end. That poor, poor rabbit. Look at him. And Thumper did look a bit of a mess, I admit it. I mean, most of it was only mud and a few grass stains, I suppose. And there were quite a few bits of twig and stuff stuck in his fur. And he had a streak of oil on one ear. But no one gets dragged the whole way across a garden and through a hedge and over another garden and through a freshly oiled cat flap and end up looking as if they'd just off to a party. And Thumper didn't care what he looked like. He was dead. The rest of them minded, though. They minded a lot. What are we going to do? Oh, this is dreadful. Next door will never speak to us again. Oh, we have to think of something. We must think of something. And they did. I have to say, it was a brilliant plan, by any standards. First, Ellie's father fetched a bucket again and filled it with warm, soapy water. He gave me a bit of a look as he did this, trying to make me feel guilty for the fact they had to dip his hands in the old fairy liquid twice in one week. I just gave him my old, I am not impressed, stare back. Then Ellie's mother dunked Thumper in the bucket and gave him a nice bubbly wash and a swill about. The water turned a pretty nasty brown colour, all that mud. And then glaring at me as if it were all my fault, they tipped it down the sink and began over again with fresh soap suds. Ellie was snivelling, of course. To stop that, Ellie, her mother said. It's getting on my nerves. If you want to do something useful, go and fetch the hairdryer. So Ellie trailed upstairs, still bawling her eyes out. I sat on top of the dresser and watched them. They upended poor Thumper and dunked him again in the bucket. Good job he wasn't his old self. He'd have hated all this washing. And when the water finally ran clear, they pulled him out and drained him. Then they plonked him on the newspaper and gave Ellie the hairdryer. There you go, they said. Fluff him up nicely. Well, she got right into it, I can tell you that. That Ellie could grow up to be a real hot shot hairdresser the way she fluffed him up. I have to say, I never saw Thumper look so nice before. And he lived in next door's hutch for years and years. And I saw him every day. Hiya, Thump. I'd sort of nod at him as I strode over the lawn to check out what was left in the feeding bowls further down the avenue. Hi, Torf. He sort of twitched back. Yeah, we were good mates. We were pals. And so it was really nice to see him looking so spruced up and smart when Ellie finished with him. He looked good. What now? says Ellie's father. Ellie's mum gave him a look. The sort of look she sometimes gives me. Only nicer. Oh no, he said. Not me. Oh no. No, 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 no. It's you or me, she said, and I can't go, can I? Why not, he said. You're smaller than I am. You can crawl through the hedge easier. That's when I realised what they had in mind. But what could I say? What could I do to stop them? To explain? Nothing. I'm just a cat. I sat and watched. Friday. I call it Friday because they left so late. The clock was already well past midnight by the time Ellie's father finally heaved himself out of his comfy chair in front of the telly and went upstairs. When he came down again, he was dressed in black, black from head to foot. You look like a cat burglar, said Ellie's mother. I wish someone would burgle our cat, he muttered. I just ignored him. I thought that was best. Together they went to the back door. Don't switch the outside light on, he warned her. You never know who might be watching. I tried to sneak out at the same time, but Eddie's mother held me back with her foot. You can just stay inside tonight, she told me. We've had enough trouble from you this week. Fair's fair, and I heard all about it anyway later from Bella and Tiger and Puskins. They all reported back. They're good mates. They all saw Ellie's father creeping across the lawn with his plastic bag full of thumper, wrapped nice in the towel to keep him clean. They all saw him forcing his way through the hole in the hedge and crawling across the next one's lawn on his tummy. Couldn't think what he was doing, Puskins says afterwards. Ruin the hole in the hedge, complained Bella. He's made it so big that Thompson's Rottweiler could get through it now. That father of Ellie's must have the, have the most dreadful night vision said so Tiger, it took him forever to find that hutch in the dark. And 
surprise the door open and stuff it in poor old Bumper and set him out neatly on his bed of straw, all curled up with the straw patted up around him. So it looked as if he was sleeping. It was very, um, lifelike, said Bella. It could have fooled me. If anyone just happened to be passing in the dark, that I really thought that poor old Bumper just died happily and peacefully in his sleep after a good life from old age. They all began howling with laughter. Shh, I said, keep it down, guys. They'll hear and I'm not supposed to be out tonight. I'm grounded. They all stared at me. Get away with you, grounded. What for? Murder, I said. For cold blooded bonicide. Bunnyside. That set us up all again. We yelled and yelled. The last I heard before we took off on gang in a gang up Beechcroft Drive was one of the bedroom windows being flung open and Ellie's father yelling, How did you get out, you crafty beast? So what's he gonna do? <laughs> Nail up the cat flap. <laughs> What do you think it did? Still Friday. He nailed up the cat flap. Would you believe this man? He comes down the stairs this morning and before he's even out of his pyjamas, he set to work with the ammo and ale. Bang, 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 bang. I'm giving the stare, I really am. But then he turns around and speaks to me directly. There, he said. That'll fix you. Now it swings this way. He gives the cat flap a hefty shove with his foot, but it doesn't swing this way. And sure enough, when the flap tried to flap back in it couldn't it hit the nail so he says to me you can go out feel free to go out feel free in fact not only to go out but also to stay out get lost or disappear forever but should you bother to come back again don't go to the trouble of bringing anything with you with you because this is now a one-way flap and so you have to sit on the doormat until one of the family lets you in he narrows his eyes at me all nasty like and woe betide you Tuffy if there's anything dead lying waiting on the doormat beside you woe betide you what a stupid expression what on earth does that mean anyway woe betide you woe betide him Saturday I hate Saturday mornings it's so unsettling all that fussing and door banging and have you got the purse? And where's the shopping list? And do we need cat food? Of course we need cat food. What else am I supposed to eat all week? Eh? They were all pretty quiet today, though. Ellie was sitting at the table carving Thumper a rather nice gravestone and half a leftover cork to full oil tile. It said, Thumper, rest in peace. You mustn't take it around next door yet, her father warned her. Not till they've told us Thumper's dead at any rate. Some people are born soft. Her eyes brimmed with tears. There goes next door now, Ellie's mother said, looking out the window. Which way is she headed? Towards the shop. Good, if we get well behind, we can get Tuffy to the vets without bumping into her. Tuffy? Vets? Ellie was even more horrified than I was. She threw herself at her father, beating him with her soft little fist. <laughs> Dad, no, you can't. I put up a far better fight with my claws. When he finally prized me out of the dark of the cupboard under the sink, his willy was ruined and his hands were scratched and bleeding all over. He wasn't very pleased about it. Come out of there, you great, fat, furry, psychopath. It's only a flu jab you've booked in for. More's the pity. Would you have believed him? I wasn't absolutely sure. Neither was Ellie, so she tagged along. I was still quite suspicious when we reached the vet. That is the only reason why I spat at the girl behind the desk. There was no reason enough to write handle with care at the top of my case notes. Even Thompson's Rottweiler doesn't even have handle with care written on the top of his case notes. So what's wrong with me? So I was a little rude in the waiting room. So what? I hate waiting. And I especially hate waiting stuffed in a wire cat cage. It's cramped, it's hot, and it's boring. After a few hundred minutes of sitting there quietly, anyone would start teasing their neighbours. I didn't mean to frighten their little sick baby gerbil half to death. I was only looking at it. It's a free country, isn't it? Can't a cat even look at a sweet little baby gerbil? And if I was licking my lips, which I wasn't, that's only because I was thirsty. Honestly, I wasn't trying to pretend I was going to eat it. The trouble with baby gerbils is they can't take a joke and neither can anyone else around here. Ellie's father looked up from the pamphlet he was reading called Your Pet and Worms. Oh, nice. Very nice. Turn the cage around the other way, Ellie, he said. Ellie turned my cage around the other way. Now I was looking at the fish's terrier. And if there's any animal in the world who ought to have handled with care written at the top of his case notes, it's the fish's terrier. Okay, so I hissed at him. It was only a little hiss. You practically had to have bionic ears to hear it. And I did growl a bit. But you'd think he'd have a head start on growling. He's a dog after all. I'm only a cat. And yeah, okay, I spat a bit, but only a bit. Nothing you'd even notice unless you're waiting big on someone. 
And well, how was I to know he wasn't feeling very well? Not everyone's waiting for the waiting for the vet is ill. I wasn't ill, was I? Actually, I've never been ill in my life. I don't even know what it feels like. But I reckon even if I were dying, um, something furry locked in a cage could make an eensy weensy noise at me without my ending up whimpering and cowering and scrambling up to get under the seat to hide behind the knees of my owner. More a chicken than a Scotch terrier, if you want my opinion. Could you please keep that vile cat of yours under control? Mrs Fisher said nastily. Ellie stuck up for me. He is in a cage, she said. He's still scaring half the animals in here to death. Can't you cover him up or something? Ellie was going to keep arguing, I could tell, but without even looking up from his worm pamphlet, her father just dropped his raincoat over my cage as if I was some mangy old parrot or something. And everything went black. No wonder, by the time the vet came out with a nasty long noodle, I was in a bit of a mood. I didn't mean to scratch her that badly, though, or smash all those little glass bottles, or tip the expensive new cat scales off the bench, or spill all that cleaning fluid. It wasn't me who ripped my record card into tiny pieces, though. That was the vet. When we left, Ellie was in tears again. She hugged my cage tightly to her chest. Oh, Tuffy, until we find a new vet who will promise to look after you, you must be so careful not to get run over. Fat chance, her father muttered. I was just glaring at him through the cage wire when he spotted Ellie's mother standing knee-deep in shopping bags outside the supermarket. You're very late, she scolded. Was there a bit of trouble at the vets? Ellie burst into tears. I mean, talk about a wimp. But her father is made of sterner stuff. He'd just taken the most huge breath, ready to snitch on me. When suddenly he let it out again, out of the corner of his eyes, he spotted trouble of another sort. Quick, he whispered. Next door is just coming through the checkout. He picked up half the shopping bags. Ellie's mother picked up the rest, but before he could get away, next door had come through the glass doors. So now all four of them were forced to chat. Morning, said Ellie's father. Morning, said next door. Nice day, said Ellie's father. Lovely, agreed next door. Nicer than yesterday, said Ellie's mother. Oh yes, next door said. Yesterday was horrible. She probably just meant the weather for heaven's sake, but Ellie's eyes filled with tears. I don't know why she was so fond of Thumper. I'm the one who's supposed to be her pet, not him. And because she couldn't see where she was properly going anyway, um, anymore. She bumped into her mother and half the tins of cat food fell out of one of the shopping bags and rolled off down the street. Ellie dumped down my cage and chased off after them. Then she made the mistake of reading labels. Oh no, she wailed. Rabbit chunks. Really, that child is such a trip. She'd never make it into our gang. She wouldn't last a week. Talking about rabbits, said next door, the most extraordinary thing happened at our house. Really, said Ellie's father, glaring at me. Oh yes, said Ellie's mother, glaring at me as well. Yes, said next door. On Monday, poor Thumper looked a bit poorly, so we brought him inside. And on Tuesday, he was worse. And on Wednesday, he died. He was terribly old, and he'd had a bad, he'd had a very life, so we didn't feel too bad about it. In fact, we had a little funeral and buried him in a box at the bottom of the garden. I'm staring up at the clouds now. And on Thursday, he'd gone. Gone? Gone? Yes, gone. And all that was left of him was a hole in the ground and an empty box. Really? Good heavens. Ellie's father was giving me the most suspicious look. And then yesterday, next door went on, something even more extraordinary happened. Thumper was back again, all fluffed up nicely and back in his hutch. Back in his hutch, you say. Fluffed up nicely. How strange. You have to hand it to them. They're good actors. They kept it all up, all their own. What an amazing story. How on earth could it have happened? Why is it astonishing? So strange. Till we were safely through the front door. And then, of course, the pair of them turned on me. Deceitful creature, making us think you killed him. Just pretending all along. I knew that cat could never have done it. That rabbit was even fatter than he is. You'd have thought they all wanted me to have murdered old Thumper. All except Ellie. She was sweet. Don't you dare pick on Tuffy, she told them. You'd leave him alone. I bet he didn't even dig poor Thumper up. I bet he was the fish's nasty fish's terrier who did all that. All Tuffy did was bring Thumper back to us so we can make sure he was buried again properly. He's a hero, a kind and thoughtful hero. She gave me a big soft squeeze. Isn't that right, Tuffy? I'm saying nothing, am I? I'm a cat. So I just sat and watched while they unnailed the cat flap. The end.
Did you enjoy that story? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Bedtime Stories with Benny. Bye!